if you're highly emotionally charged, uh, it, it and somebody gives you a little bit of a startle stimulus, you're very jumpy. Uh, you, you you literally jump more than somebody else might, and that is visible within EEG. Uh, let's um, let's give a little. Um, what we have here is a an individual with the eyes open, and you can see there's eye movements, these uh, frontal twitches, lateral and vertical eye movements. But I'd like to point to the back of the head. Um, every time you focus on something, you get a P100, a, a positive wave about 100 milliseconds later at the back of the head. If you're emotionally charged, it gets there early and it gets there big. And we end up seeing these positive is down in EG land. Um, you can it's see right. these waves. Jesse, you have to know that positive is down in EEG. Yeah. Okay. So, so remember, Jay, he's new to EEG. Yep. As well, and a lot of people be. All of these waves that you see going downward here are basically the person focusing on another thing. Normally, when you ask somebody to re have an EEG recorded, you tell them to sit there quietly keep their eyes still and focus on a spot. Well, this person is hyper vigilant. If you've been traumatized, instead of staring at a spot on the wall, they're looking for something coming. They're, they're, they're vigilant. And these repetitive uh, eyes open discharges at the back of the head that you see all the way through here are not common. And it, 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 especially uh, in, in this repetitive nature like this, this person has had trauma. There's no question about it. They're hypervigilant now. Instead of making a resting state rhythmic background alpha, their alpha is attenuated and they're making lambda waves at the back of the head. Now, this pattern, if I see this, I can, without knowing anything about the patient, I can tell you that they've been traumatized. And the other pattern that's en that ends up being uh, uh, equally uh, important, this is an eyes closed recording. And as we scroll through the EEG, the right posterior temporal parietal area here uh, isn't supposed to have that much background alpha. Alpha should be O and O2 and a little PZ. Um, but the, the, this right posterior temporal area that perceives facial expressions, body language, the tone of speech. Um, if that area is idled, you basically have turned off your sensitivity uh, to emotion, it, perhaps in a self-protective manner, but this has to be fixed in order for the person to end up not being somebody who has PTSD on a chronic basis. This has to be fixed. Neurofeedback can fix that. Now, uh, what I what I need to do is essentially create a set of maps of this data because wiggly lines don't mean that much to a lot of people. And what we're gonna do is create a set of maps and this set of maps basically, and let me colorize this with traditional band ranges. The alpha band is a normal background rhythm at the back of the head. And you should see alpha at 01, 02 at the back of the head and PZ kind of these three at the back. Alpha Obviously, is, alpha is at 10, 10 hertz here. Yeah, this, this, this is an extremely aberrant amount of resting state. The spot that's supposed to perceive emotion and social interaction is essentially idled. If you have this, you know, if, if you're blind, you carry a red and white cane and you tap around and people know you're blind. Well, Nobody has a cane that's purple or green or something because you're emotionally blind, but this person is emotionally blind. If you close your eyes, you get alpha at the back of the head. His emotional eyes are closed. And it, it, it basically is going to be a, a, a functional deficit uh, that, that he's going to have to overcome. And until you actually start to get this right posterior quadrant working, uh, the, the person is going to end up suffering from their trauma. Uh, and, and having difficulty with social relations because, you know, if you can't perceive somebody's facial expression, it's hard to be appropriate with them. So uh, um, the EEG uh, is, a, is a tool that allows us to see the trauma and 
neurofeedback is a tool that allows us to train the brain how it works. And we can fix this with neurofeedback. Now, um, the EEG traditionally is seen as a neurology turf, um, and uh, they look at epilepsy and encephalopathies. If you ask a neurologist, can you see PTSD in the EEG? He will say no. Uh, but that's because they don't know the neuropsychological presentation. This is outside of their expertise. And uh, uh, it's unfortunate because uh, they, they could be helping a lot, of a lot of people if they knew what they were looking at. And it'd be good to end up having more interaction uh, uh, through the medical community uh, to be able to identify the brain changes that are associated with their uh, PTSD circumstances. But um, it, it, you know, it, it's going to take time. Thank you.